Hello everyone and good morning. I am Zicargo and welcome to day five. Day five. Yeah, we're on day five. Anyway, uh, this one's going to be all about hotkeys and control setups. Now, you do whatever you want to. Uh, <laughs> my recommendation is going to be that you make sure that you have the ability to actually press the buttons that you need to. And I'm going to show you what I use as a suggestion. But it's a suggestion. Uh, almost everyone I know uses a wildly different hotkey setup. Basically, you just want to make sure that you have all your bases covered and uh, that you that whatever you're using actually works for you. Um, for the first three or four thousand hours of Dota, I only had three item keys bound. I would just put passive items or stat items or, or buttons that I would click in, in my other three item slots. So, after 3,000 hours of Dota, trying to get used to having six buttons to press, it's a lot harder to relearn than it is to learn right the first time. So, with that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and move on here. I want to say a quick note about anyone who's interested in micro heroes or anyone who wants to play carry where you'll, you'll frequently need to buy a manta style in strategy games there are uh, things called control groups and this is basically a button that you press that automatically selects a number of your units a specified number of your units so if i use manta style here i get two clones now i can select these clones one at a time we'll go ahead and leave this one so you can see which clones i have selected I can select them one at a time by clicking on them and then giving them an order, but in the middle of a team fight, that's a really cumbersome way to do things. What I recommend on any hero that you're likely to buy a Mantis style on, that's why we've got our Juggy Boy here, by the way, I recommend that you go into demo, buy a Mantis style, use it, select them, and put them, put everything on a control group. The way that you put things on a control group, if you're using the default keys, should be by holding control and then pressing one of your number keys. So I select all three of these, I press control four, and now wherever I'm standing, I can just press four and it will automatically select everything. When I resummon my Manta, I can press four and it has saved the control group. Okay, so if you go into demo and you make a control group, you can you keep it for the game. Um, this can be really useful. I have several different control groups for Juggernaut. I have his healing ward on one, and then uh, on two, I have both illusions. And then on three, I have Juggernaut and one illusion. So what I can do is I can use this Manta style and then immediately have one illusion lagging behind. This is just so that I can trick other people. But my point is that you can get fancy and you can customize these and you can set it up however you want to. I recommend having healing ward on a control group. I recommend using having your mantis styles on a control group so that you can, in mid fight, just press a button, select these guys, and have them do exactly what you want to do. So with that covered, let's go ahead and dive into the rest of the controls. Up here in the top left is the settings button, and the first page is the hotkeys page. I have my spells on Q, W, E, and R for my normal spells. Uh, anything else I use T and G here for. So you can just look at your keyboard, Q, W, E, R, T, and G. That's what I recommend for my spells. Some people do wildly different things. That's fine. If you want to do something different, you can do that. For my items, I've got a really nice standard setup. ASDF for the top row of the neutral, ZXC for the bottom row, and V for the teleport. Um, I really like this item setup, but again, do what you will. For the interface, camera grip is on mouse 3. Now, just to tell you what camera grip is, camera grip, if I press middle mouse, I can drag my camera around. This is, a, I highly recommend that you get used to using this a little bit. It's very good for uh, small controlled mouse movements, or small controlled camera movements without using edge pan. The thing about using edge pan is if I have a target that I'm trying to cast on, let's say he's like here, and my camera's over here. If I want to edge pan, I need to jerk my mouse over to the side of the camera, to the side of the screen that I'm trying to move it. 
just so that I can get my camera centered where I need to. So if there's a, if there's a hero right here and I need to cast something on him, I have to adjust my camera and then reset my mouse in order to actually cast that on it. Whereas if you're using something like Edge Pan, you can just slowly adjust it as you're going. So I highly recommend that you do get used to using both Edge Pan and Camera Grip in tandem with one another. Uh, if you just rely on Edge Pan, there's going to be a there's going to be the occasional scenario where you won't have control over your camera the way you need to. To chat to your team, it's enter, return, as it's called in this. Or to chat to everyone, shift, enter. Uh, you combine your chat wheels to stuff. I have them bound to be in H because I don't use those buttons. Uh, they're rather far over on the keyboard, but that's okay. Pause, default bind is F9. I highly recommend that you just know what your pause button is set to. Scoreboard. Why do I have the scoreboard bound? The scoreboard can give you a whole bunch of information, and if you watch high-level players, they check it frequently. The scoreboard, it can give you a guesstimate of how strong enemy heroes are. It can tell you the story of what happened in the mid lane. Is the enemy mid laner two levels higher with a kill and two assists? That's what happened. You know that he ganked a side lane, at least. You know that maybe he solo killed the enemy mid. Does your mid have a death or two? Okay, well now you know what happened, right? It's really easy to just click the scoreboard, get a basic overview of what's happened so far in the game. So now you're asking, okay, okay, so it's useful, but why is it on a hotkey? What's wrong with just clicking it? Well, really, you want any interface things to take up as little time as possible. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. You don't want, if you only have three or four seconds from one camp to the next, and you have to check what's happening in all the lanes, and you want to check your team's items, and you got to think about your own items, you're just adding however long it takes you to click on the scoreboard, and then you're hovering your mouse on that side of the screen until you click close the scoreboard. So that's why I put it on a hotkey. Just a little bit of expanding on what I've talked about so far. Getting an idea of how many kills the enemy cores have tells you who's going to be strong. So if you are stuck deciding between items, knowing which enemy hero is powerful is really useful information for the core, and the scoreboard is one of the tools available to check that. So I definitely recommend having this bound to a key. I also recommend making sure whatever key you have it bound to, you're not going to accidentally press. Over here under Unit Actions, select Hero. I have it on space. What's really nice about Select Hero is that if you double tap it, it jumps your camera to it. So you can be looking at whatever you want to, and you could just double tap space to go straight back to your hero. Control, uh, select all controlled units. This can be very useful. Um, personally, I don't use it. Uh, I have everything I want to select on a specific control group, and I select it that way. But some people, a lot of people actually, definitely use this for illusion heroes. Again, this one's personal preference. If you're going to put every all your units on a control group, then this is nice. If you don't want to put all your units on a control group, and you want the ability to select them anyways, this can also be nice. For heroes like Enchantress, Enchantress takes control of a creep, and you can't set up control groups ahead of time. This can be very useful because that button will automatically select your hero and the creep when you uh, dominate a creep. So, button has its uses. It's kind of personal preference if you want to use it. So if you think you want it, by all means, put it on something. Attack move is really useful because it takes away the need for really high precision when you are in a really close fight. You don't have to perfectly land a click on every hero, every auto attack. Attack move. I have my attack move on caps lock. Uh, a lot of people are opposed to using caps lock for anything, uh, just because they don't like the idea of accidentally leaving caps lock on. A lot of lot, and <laughs> some people think I'm crazy when I tell them I actually use caps lock. And hold position. This hold position key is incredibly important. Hold position is what you're going to use to cancel a TP if you need to. It's also what you're going to use to cancel your auto attack if you need to. So when you're in the laning phase and you actually are trying to go for last hits. The cancel, the hold position key is what you will use to stop your auto attack. Now animation canceling is very useful for both spells and auto attacks, but we'll end up covering that in a later video. But it's worth noting, 
hold position key is very useful for that. You'll often end up in situations where both heroes are going for the same last hit or deny, and they're both just sitting there faking each other out like, oh, 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 who's gonna hit it? Who's gonna hit it? I'm gonna hit it. So, yeah, hold position. Definitely have that on a key you're, uh, you're happy with pressing. And then shop actions, select courier. I leave this on F2, and I have my purchase quick by bound. You don't really need courier deliver items bound to anything uh, because there's already a hotkey. So if you select your courier, you have this F button, which transfers any items that are on it. So personally, I don't think you need that bound. Now, what does purchase quick buy do? Well, we'll get into this more when we talk about the shop. But basically, in the shop, you can set it up so that as you farm, right here in this tab is the item that you want to buy. Purchase quick buy spends the gold that you have on the leftmost item that it can afford in this whole quick buy thing. You can drag items down into here. I don't like that. You can also shift click items. If you want to queue up multiple items, you can hold control and shift and you can you can queue up as many items as you want to. Purchase quick buy is very nice because when you die you lose some of your gold. So if you if you all of a sudden get ganked and you're stunned and you're about to die and you need to just spend money so that you lose as little as possible when you die, you press this button. You spam it. And that will help you do what's it's done. That's called buying out. Now, we're going to spawn in a dummy target and we're going to talk a little bit quick cast. Quick cast is used to remove the delay that you have when you left click. So you press the spell and then you left click on the target. When you use quick cast, you just remove the left click. Now to be a little bit more specific, using quick casts uh, automatically uses the skill on the closest thing to your cursor within a limited range. Now this is a really small difference in time, but basically you want to think about how long your reaction time is. Quick cast speeds up your spell by however many milliseconds and you're kind of using your cast against their reaction time in some scenarios. While we're on the topic of controls, whenever I am playing Juggernaut, uh, I do rebound this to E and this to, to T just so that I can use so Flash as a, a, a normal skill instead of pressing T. That's just a normal, a normal rebind that I do. Punch Dismember is a much better option, but you want to use this when time is really of the essence. So, I recommend putting some abilities on quick cast. The more comfortable you are with landing quick cast, the better it's going to be. So personally, I would use this type of setup. Uh, it doesn't really matter for. It doesn't really matter for, for Blade Fury because that spell just goes off anyway. You don't target anything with it. But I would use it for Healing Word. Having Healing Word pop up at just the right moment has saved me in quite a few spots. Basically, what you want to think about Quick Cast is you add all the time from when you press the skill to when you left click on the enemy hero. You just add that to your cast time. What Quick Cast does is remove that. It's not very much time, but there are some heroes where it definitely matters with stuns. Uh, I highly recommend you do it with hexes. If you, uh, if you have the mouse accuracy to actually land the hex with the quick cast on it, I highly recommend that you do it because uh, there will be heroes that get away or BKB or something like that if you're slow on your buttons. Uh, especially as you go up against higher skill players, little little time differentials, like milliseconds, is the difference between you, know, you landing your spell or them having the reaction time to do something about it. So quick cast, I recommend you play around with it if you don't like it, turn it off. It's not its not the biggest thing. You know, strategy and positioning and aim, all of those things can matter more than in like milliseconds on, on casting stuff. But just be aware of this option and uh, try it out for certain spells. It's extreme. If you, if you want to play Pudge, you absolutely have to put Dismember on Quick Cast. So I was going to leave in a demonstration trying to explain exactly why and showcase the cast time on Dismember, but this video has ended up uh, going longer than I thought it would. Uh, that seems to be a bit of a trend. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, not leave in that demonstration. Directional move. Yes. Directional move. So, why is directional move useful? What does it actually do for us? Well, if I am running from this Ricky, and I'm trying to force staff myself down this cliff. 
trying to run off in this direction, I want to force staff myself down this cliff. If I click down the cliff, my hero begins to path around it. And that's not what I want. What I want is for my hero to just walk in the direction of the cliff. Now, with right here, it's pretty easy because you could just walk here. But this gets a little bit more complicated where if I'm fighting in trees and I need to retreat and I want to force staff myself out. The path through the trees here has me walking and turning all which ways. It's not a straight path. So if all of a sudden I absolutely need to face my hero in this direction, instead of trying to walk around this tree, I can press 5, or whatever your directional move is on, and then I can force staff. That's what's useful about this key. Um, there are a couple of other things. Namely, uh, I play a lot of Marana. So let's go ahead and... Where's the... There we go. Let's switch on over to... Marana. Marana's Leap is a directional-based skill, so being able to use the directional move key in order to set up leaps is actually really important on this hero. One of the reasons why I don't really recommend this hero to new players, not only does it have two skill shots, but it actually needs to use the directional move key uh, quite frequently, in fact. You, you need to use it almost, uh, almost every time you uh, are trying to land a Starfall in a tricky spot, which is uh, quite often. So yeah, definitely have directional move bound. Try to get a little used to it. Directional move is tricky because you're not going to use it. You'll go you'll go plenty of games in a row without ever needing it. It's a nice thing to have in your back pocket for when you do need it. Other than that, you could unbind showcase view if you're going to end up ever accidentally pressing I. You don't really need that. Taunt, I consider this an absolutely necessary hotkey, but you know, that's just me. Camera positions, if you are an RTS nerd, uh, you might have used camera positions. I've played some StarCraft, and you definitely need these uh, from time to time, just so that you can quickly jump to a base where there's a whole bunch of different buttons that you need to press. I find them mostly useless in Dota, I'm not gonna lie, I've never been like, man, I really wish I had a camera hotkey set up. The only time I've ever- I have used one- I used to use one for the mid lane so that I could check on how it was going back when the position 4 was a roamer patch, but since then, uh, I have not. Now, I want to talk about these options over here. Quit cast on key down. This means that the spell will cast the instant you press it down. So normally, uh, with this option off, you have to release the key in order for it to press. Quick cast is all about removing as much delay from the cast of a spell as you possibly can. So I absolutely recommend that you turn this on. Like this is the whole point of quick cast is to just be a little bit faster. Double tap ability to self cast. I recommend that you get used to to holding alt and pressing the ability. And the reason is it's actually it is faster to press alt and a button at the same time than it is to press a button twice. So if I have this Yules on C, or D, in order for me to press, first off, I should mention, there is a bug whereby some people cannot use double cast. So even though I have it enabled, I'm one of these people who cannot double tap this ability to self cast. But if I hammer the keys, you can hear that it takes me that long to press it. Whereas if I press Alt and D, that was both keys. Hopefully you heard that on the mic. If you did, I'll try to leave it in. It is directly faster to press Alt and another key at the same time than it is to double tap. So a lot of these things, they're small things, but they come down to actual cast speed. So something like Yules, you use it reactively to dodge a spell. Your ability to con uh, control exactly when your Yules goes off is very important. So adding that extra little bit of delay where you have to lift your finger up and then press it down again, that's no bueno. I think we've covered almost everything. Down here, there are some people who want to use left click to drag the uh, camera around. I don't recommend making the spell that, making the button that you use to target spells and items into the same thing that you use to move your camera. Uh, I 
So I do not recommend this, but some I, I know one guy who uses it. I think he's weird, and he's not overly good at Dota, but there you go. You can do that. And then you can enable the uh, advanced quick cast settings if you want to. I personally don't find any of the functions that useful, but it does make the UI a little bit more complicated, so I have it off because I don't use it. But, yeah. Other than that, that's, uh, that's, that's my recommendations for keybinds. You want to make sure that you have six buttons for spells. And I know that sounds like a lot, because you've also got eight buttons for items over here. <laughs> that's a lot of buttons. But, I promise you, if they are on your keyboard and ready to and bound and you're able to cast them, eventually you're not going to have too much of a problem pressing those buttons. What you don't want to do is say, you know what, six items, that's a lot for me. I don't I don't need this. I don't I don't need this. I don't need that and I don't need this. And you know what, neutral items, I'll just grab a passive one. That's what you do not want to do. Okay? Just leave these buttons bound somewhere reasonable that makes sense to you that you could actually press and you're probably gonna miss like six buttons is a lot of buttons but and you're probably gonna miss plenty of them but leave them out on your keyboard so that you have the chance to get used to them otherwise you will literally never get used to them and you'll be stuck on however many buttons you do have bound that's going to limit the amount of heroes that you can play morphling we're gonna use morphling as a real quick example here morphling's not even an overly complicated hero Morphling's not an overly complicated hero to play. He just has six buttons instead of four. And uh, if you're just not used to pressing these buttons ever, then Morphling is really going to be a bit of like a like a culture shock, a cold water shock uh, to play. Because what I can recommend for Morphling that works for me is you can actually switch these buttons around. I used to use this on Morphling. I still do use it on Morphling. It's just that my keys got reset somehow. Um, oh, that's another thing. Your keys will... Uh, I don't know if everyone has this bug, but my keys get reset every once in a while. Anyway, don't be afraid to play around with your controls. Don't be afraid to bind the buttons you want to press. There's also a video by Purge, and he's playing with Sir Action Slacks, and they go over hotkeys. Uh, that video is hilarious. It's also pretty informative. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that video in the description because I do think it's a very good one. And is there anything else? Purchase Sticky. Some people are really going to recommend that you have uh, these buttons bound. I really don't. I, I don't think that any of this matters. Next time, I think what I'm going to do instead of doing an entire video on items is I think I'm going to start with a position and introduce items for that position. And we'll work up towards knowledge of the shop by going through some things at a time. And then hopefully by the time we're done with some of the roles, you'll, you'll have a little bit more of an understanding of just how to navigate the shop. Because I'll have used several examples of doing so. I don't think... Uh, the items themselves, they don't make too much sense unless they're in the context of something else. Like, just sitting here, look at, like, like, what's four armor for? It's like, well, four armor is for blocking physical damage. But that's still a relatively out-of-context statement. You have to know what physical damage is coming at you in order to know the utility of that. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to cover the support roles and go over support items and go over stuff like that. And then after that, we'll, we'll kind of see what's left to explore in the shop. And maybe I'll do an overview of that. Anyway, that has been my overview for the controls. Uh, I hope I gave you some useful information in this video, and I hope you are enjoying the series so far. Uh, if you have found what I've said useful, or you think it would be useful to some newer players, anyways, that's all I got for you on the topic of controls. If you did enjoy this video, or you think it would be useful to new players, please consider leaving a like, comment, or even sharing the video. Uh, sharing the video is the biggest thing that you can do to help. I'm a small YouTube channel, so the exposure of just plopping this in a random Discord or sending it to someone who's maybe newish to Dota, maybe someone who knows someone who's newish to Dota, anyway, any, bleh, anything like that would help an absolute ton. And if you want to see more videos in the future, consider subscribing to the channel, because I do intend to keep 
uploading these anyway for at least the next month or so. We'll see. And then, uh, yeah, anyway, I've been Sicargo. You've been an absolute legend. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.